Hello there, and welcome to another random video of Godot Concepts Simplified. Um, the other day I was looking at some new comments on my dashing and sprinting video, and uh, got into a conversation with Joao Enrique Lopez. I hope I pronounced that right. And uh, he was basically uh, um, initially asking about if uh, you know, the jump speed and everything is preserved when I'm dashing. But then the conversation eventually um, branched off into other topics. And um, he was asking about... Um, well, here's the comment. Uh, he said, Hey, bro, in some games, you can walk and run with directional depending on the pressure. Any idea how they make it? So um, in this video, I'm going to cover how to, to do this, this variable speed depending on the pressure on the joystick. Whenever you're utilizing analog sticks, um, how you can press the stick all the way for full speed or just partially for a fraction of the speed. Um, and we also talked briefly on, uh, on flip H. So I might just touch briefly on that because I'm trying a couple of things in this random experimental project that I have up here. Uh, let me just pull that up. So basically what I have is... Um, oh wait, actually let me, let me stop that and I'll run the main scene. Um, I have just a basic player. He doesn't have the ability to jump or do anything, just walk left and right. Um, and I just threw just a stock background image in the back just for fun. So there he is walking to the right and to the left. He can't jump or anything. But um, but I set it up so that if I just barely push the stick, he'll move very slowly. And as you see, I also have it set up that even the animation itself also changes speed based on how how far I'm pushing the stick. I know the walk animation is kind of cheesy and I, I still have a lot of refining to do. I was experimenting with um, with using different sprites all kind of uh, uh, connected together and animating their rotation uh, to, to do kind of like a like a, a rigged doll sort of animation technique. And so this is just you know, something I've been trying to learn how to do and figure out sort of my own simplified methods for it. Um, so let's take a look at how I did this. And it's actually really simple. Um, I had mentioned in our conversation that there is a method uh, with input called get action strength, and then in the parentheses, whichever control you have set up. Now, in my project settings under input map, I went ahead and created two of my own controls. I just called them right and left, and I set them to the left analog stick. Uh, right when I press the left analog stick to the right, and left when I press the left analog stick to the left. Um, if you do get action strength with just regular like keyboard controls or button controls, then the value that you will get for each one of these, uh, from you know, like say we did UI left and UI right, um, would just be a one or a negative one or zero if there is uh, nothing being pressed. However, whenever you set it to an analog stick, you will see that you do get um, a range of values from 0 to 1 uh, within, within the decimals. So this can be super useful for um, you know, varying our speed uh, or things like the playback speed of your animations. And that's how I set this up. So I created a variable called dir for direction. Um, and I set it equal to uh, the get action strength of the right control minus the get action strength of the left. So if I push to the right, 
I'll get anything from 0 to 1, and if I push to the left, anything from 0 to negative 1. Um, and then we have some conditions. Uh, let me go ahead and make the text just a little bit bigger so folks can see my script. Um, if direction is not equal to 0, that's what the exclamation point in the front means for folks that, that don't understand that. Um, if it's not zero, which means I'm pushing the stick either left or right, then we're going to go ahead and play the walk animation, because our standing around animation is the default if I'm not walking. We're going to set our velocity to a new vector 2 that plugs in this speed variable, which this could be an export variable, so you could experiment with different speeds. And I'm going to multiply the speed times that direction value that we got from this get action strength line up here. Um, and then since I have no vertical movement, it's just zero for the vector two. Um, but I also plugged in that the animation player's playback speed is going to be set equal to whatever direction is. However, I do need to put it within this um, absolute value because um, I'm not sure what would happen with animation players playback speed if say I push left and it plugged in a negative value here so instead of setting it directly to speed I set it to the absolute value I'm sorry I didn't mean to say speed instead of setting it just directly to direction I set it to the absolute value of direction so whether it's a negative or a positive value it's going to um, you know, just give the playback speed a, a positive number. And um, as you saw when I played the game uh, at the beginning here, uh, it works really well. There's not very much I have to do. The get action strength does most of the work for us here. Um, and just on a side note, uh, we were talking about doing flip H. Well, um, if I were just using a regular sprite with just a simple sprite sheet, um, that would work. And as I had mentioned in, in my message before, um, Flip H is, is kind of weird because instead of saying something like, if knife.velocity is less than zero, Flip H equals true, that just seems logically like what it would be, but for whatever reason in GD script, the syntax is kind of strange for the flip H. This concept here would need to be written instead. Uh, just for example, knife.flip H equals velocity.x being less than zero. Uh, you know, this is just an example of one way that the flip H line works. However, in my project, I don't have just one simple sprite because I have um, all these different connected pieces that are all moving sort of independently and sort of all tied together. Um, it would be really problematic to try to flip H all of these when the player is moving left. So instead what I did was uh, all of these pieces are all contained in one uh, node 2D that I called body. And whenever direction is less, I'm sorry, is less than zero, meaning that I'm pushing left on the stick and the character should be moving to the left, instead of doing flip H, what I did instead was uh, body dot set scale. Uh, and then I set it to a vector 2 with a negative x value. And that is another way that you can very easily flip um, not just sprites, but other things too, because you can't, uh, you can't flip H a node 2D. You can flip H sprites, but not node 2Ds. So I had to do it this way in my script. I think you could probably also type it like um, body dot scale equals you know, vector two 
negative one, one. You know, you could you could type it this way. I don't think you have to always say set scale. Um, but just in a forum that I saw, this is the way they did it. So that's how I how I went with it. Um, I think this is a little more confusing to beginners. You know, anything with set just seems like it's a little bit intimidating to new folks. But um, whichever way floats your boat, whatever way you, you prefer to do it. So anyway, um, so yeah, there you have it. Um, get action strength right minus left gives us a value, um, and we plug that value in. Um, in fact, let's run the game one more time, and I'll just show you what's happening down in the debugger, uh, since I do have a line of code telling us to print directions. So here we have zeros down there. I push all the way to the right. Oh, it's not showing it. Too many frames running. Push all the way to the right. You can see the one in there. Um, if I push all the way to the left, you see some negative ones there. Um, maybe I just push a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, and then you can see some decimal values happening in there. And that gets plugged in to our formula here. To uh, oops, let me stop the game here gets plugged into our formula here and uh, it helps us to have a variable speed pretty easily and it very easily plugs into this playback back speed if you wanted to change your animations as well. Anyway, I hope this is helpful to somebody out there um, and uh, if you have any questions or comments on this video or, or requests for other concepts for me to tackle and try to present in a simplified way I would be happy to do that. Uh, just leave a comment down below and uh, enjoy and have a wonderful evening and happy coding.